excited to be channeling some light language for you guys again, right? <laughs> it's going to be good. So I want to channel this light language with the intention of strengthening our immune system. However, I want to work with it in a little bit of a different way in terms of I want to introduce this idea of our psychic immune system. Because if we have immune system for what we are taking in like every day, different um, germs that we take in, different things that are foreign in our, into our bodies and our white blood cells, they go around and they take care of it and they kind of alchemize it into nothingness and we stay healthy. Yes? Yes. So today, <laughs> today I want to talk about how can we kind of introduce this notion that our body is also working in that way with psychic, with our psychic senses or with how we're taking things in at a level that we may or may not be 100% aware of consciously. However, it's still impacting us. And this is one of my biggest messages to do with psychic abilities is that you may be aware that you are sensitive, that you have these extra gifts that maybe others don't. However, a lot of the time we're actually disconnected with how much it is actually impacting our life. How much this energy that we are continually taking in is actually draining us or weighing us down. And we don't even often recognize what our life would be like without all of this stuff around. Visually, I often will see auras, yeah? Well, I see auras in my third eye, but when I see people's auras that have a lot of dark matter kind of attached to it, this is sort of what I'm talking about. <laughs> we may have these attachments to us and it's nothing to be afraid of. It's very real, you know, it's very real. And the way that we deal with that is that we take care of our aura. We do aura cleansing. You know, if we feel especially that we need to be clearing, we will use sage, okay? Because that's heavy. That's like a blanket clearing. It just clears away all. However, I use... <laughs> I use aura mist. Just with essential oils and water. And I spray this like 12 times a day in my aura, okay? <laughs> because I like to keep myself clear. So this is some of, that's sort of how you can work with this stuff at a conscious level. Okay, I can use aura mist, I can cleanse with sound. Sound is very cleansing. If you wanna clear your home, which is very important, okay? If you're clearing your system, you need to clear your home as well, or else your home will influence your system. It's interesting. This is why when you move into a new place, always, always, always cleanse the energy of the space because it will have the old um, people who used to live there, it will have their energy system in place and most likely you don't want to go into theirs. So this is how we can consciously work with it. Sage, aura spray, clapping in all of the corners of a room using light language is very, very clearing, okay? <laughs> and... Boundaries. <laughs> Boundaries with people in our life. Yeah, because we learn, we learn boundaries. Like if we don't have good boundaries at a, at a, in the third dimension, we do not have good boundaries in the fifth dimension, in the astral plane. We do not have good boundaries in the seventh dimension, wherever we are. You see what I mean? We have to kind of work with it here and it will filter through, it will filter through. <laughs> so today I'm not trying to like, get you to thinking in your mind about this stuff. I really just want you to think about it. This process of psychic immunity, like where our psychic immune system is, is continuously clearing and cleansing for us, that can be effortless. That can be subconscious. That can be as unbeknownst to you as your actual immune system going to work for you every day, loving you, loving you, loving you. <laughs> So this is what I'm going to introduce you today. 
We're going to set it up and anyone who receives this codes, they can receive it and have it set up in them too, okay? And it's something that, you know, we take for granted. We really do. We take for granted how much, um, how much psychic sensory stuff impacts us. So this is what I want to introduce to you today. I also want to introduce you to an idea around how do I take responsibility for my boundaries in the psychic world, right? Because a lot of us are kind of not sure how we're doing it, how we're not doing it. So <laughs> where do I begin? I would say the number one way to see if you aren't having a boundary with your psychic um, senses or with, your, with what you're taking in through your aura is do you feel drained? It's just ask yourself that question after anything, after you're with someone, after you're out of place, after you do something, do you feel drained? If the answer is yes, well then you, there's a boundary you need to enforce there in, energetically. And it kind of is as simple as that. And I know a lot of people will be like, oh, but I don't know, every time I'm with my family or this friend of mine, I always feel drained. I always feel drained. Well, that's a message. That's a message from your body, from your system, telling you that you need to look after it better. <laughs> and, and it's hard because a lot of the time we might have heard this um, way of being with this stuff of saying well if this person this person drains me no <laughs> no one drains us we drain ourselves we are always allowing that exchange to take place and the reason you feel drained is because you are giving much more than you are receiving okay you're giving more of the energy than you are receiving in some cases you are giving all of the energy receiving nothing back so we actually have to start talking about energy systems and how we are in relationship with people, with energetically. And most of the time we are participating in an energy system that is outside of our own system. Oh wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. This looks like feeling drained. Yeah? This looks like getting a message from someone and all of a sudden you're just like... <laughs> energy goes like that and you're like what whoa I feel really triggered by this person this is where energy systems come in and I'm gonna talk a lot about this probably in in my in the in the coming sort of while but if you're really interested in that then I already have information about that on my patreon so you can go over there subscribe hang out it's fun but I'm not gonna go much into that today it is literally the basis of the work I'm moving into. I'm also going to have a website coming out really soon, you guys. It's so exciting. This week, I'm pretty sure it'll be going public, so yay. And there it's going to have a lot more information about how do we give, how do we give our energy away? Okay, well, if someone isn't draining me, well, then I'm choosing to give it away, right? Yes. You are, you are, you are, you are. And there are a lot of different reasons for this, okay? And most of it is that we aren't perceiving that we are doing that. We are not seeing it. We don't realise it's happening. And if maybe that little voice comes up in us that says, actually, I feel really bad about this friendship with this person. Oh, maybe another voice will come in and just start, just start saying, no, no, no. You feel fine about this. This is fine. This is normal. This is natural. This is how you always feel. Da, da, da. And we shut ourselves down. We may even call that gaslighting ourselves. This is how we maintain participation in an energy system that is outside of ourself. Okay, and I struggled with this for such a long time because I didn't understand how do I be around someone and not let them drain me? <laughs> because I didn't realize that I was allowing it to happen. I didn't realize I was I was the one participating in that energy exchange. I was. And if I removed myself from that, it wasn't happening anymore. <laughs> it's true. It's true. 
And I know this is a big one for you guys, right? How do I not feel drained around these people? Oh my God, I just can't stand being around this one or this one or this one. It's not their fault. <laughs> it's not necessarily your fault, but it is necessarily your responsibility to do something about it. And doing something about it doesn't, spe doesn't mean spending the rest of your life saying, oh, well, I'm just really sensitive and people always drain me and that's how it will always be. No, it is a direct message to you. It's a message about this energy you are exchanging with this person, about a deeper thing going on there. And I'm not saying it isn't complicated, especially when it's family, yeah? It can be very, very convoluted. But again, <laughs> I'm sorry, but are you going to wait for every single person in the entire world to decide that they don't want to drain your energy anymore? That they don't want a piece of you anymore? Because I'm telling you, they do. Everyone will want your energy if you are willing to give it away. And this is how we can get really stuck in our identity as a victim in the world because it really we are trapped in this illusion we are trapped in this illusion of i'm just in this world and people drain me instead of i'm participating in an energy system that is completely outside of myself that leaves me feeling drained and tired and exhausted and lacking in my faith and it's my responsibility to pull my energy back into myself and reconnect to my connection to god to source to all that is, and refuel through my own chakra system, through my own energy system. And it is my responsibility to become aware of when I am sacrificing my sovereignty as a soul and I am participating in an energy exchange that I don't like and that I am the only one who has the power to change that in my life. that does remind me of something actually that reminds me of like the question of sort of how can I be in relationship with people who are different to me who believe different things to me who perceive life differently to me who especially if they're people close to us in our life, how do we reconcile the differences in seeing the world or the differences in our beliefs? I believe it is, again, down to recognising that our responsibility is to our own soul. It is to our own soul sovereignty in life. And part of soul sovereignty is being able to be sovereign, autonomous, independent, individual, even innovative, in the way you think, in the way you speak, in the way you love, in the way you are in relationship with everybody, in the way you honour someone else's way of seeing things, in the way you honour someone else's belief system. That is soul sovereignty, is it not? So, I'm just going to get into some light language now because I've spoken for quite a while. <laughs> Let's do it.
runda yosena haleta hoya anda he aronda he anda ha yo so aya enando ese haruaeta hoya はやそとえねんだよもたれしかないとしてたりもしたらだろうのえやなそとえしたいてだれとかたはなたれしたりねんうらんだえそたりのおんなへたれしたはろやなたれしないしえんだれそとはまへやんどへかたはいし Much love. Bye.